we're going to start the construction by marking all of our parts on the plywood sheet. Um, some of the parts are pre-marked on the side of the part, but not on the part itself. And the reason we did this is for those people that don't want to have marks on their parts. So if you can remember which part is which, uh, then you don't need to mark them. But if you do want to mark them, just go ahead and take a pen or a pen pencil and go ahead and mark them like this one right here it says A2, so I'll mark A2 on it. This is an E1 or the E part, the C part, A1, B2, and B1. So those are all the parts there. And now I want to remove the parts. I want to start with the payload or the, the sled, which is this one here. And it's got some little holes that I'm going to punch out. And I'm just going to take a little, little screwdriver and you can just punch these out. There's a slot right there and a little hole right there. Now, it also has a little rectangle here. And that is for the Altus Metrum, Altus Metrum Easy Mini Altimeter which is this one here. Now these uh, payload bays are, are made specifically for only two altimeters. Um, and the reason is the size. That we, there's just not a lot of room inside of a BT-60 size rocket. Um, so you can either use the Stratologger CF or the Easy Mini. Now the Stratologger, there wasn't the original Stratologger. And then there's the CF version, which is this one right here. And the, C, the original one is too long to fit into the rocket, into these small payload bays. So we're not building for that one. We're only using the CF or the Easy Mini. Now the Easy Mini has a USB port on the side of it. And once this is attached to the board, you can't plug into it. So there's this little rectangle here. You can snap that out. Just like that. And now when you put it in there, now you can plug directly into the board without removing the board from the, the, the sled. So that's what that's for. If you're using the perfect flight, just go ahead and leave it in there. It doesn't hurt if you snap it out like I did. But uh, so in this case, I'll just go ahead and use the Easy Mini, which is this one right here. Um, now I want to first thing is to sand this and I want to sand it smooth on both sides. If you don't sand it, you'll figure it out pretty quick that the parts don't fit together because they were meant to be sanded. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove A1 and A2. And again, there's the little slots in the holes, and you can pop those out pronto tanto. That means really quick. <laughs> OK, so I got that one. One other little hole here. Now, if you get these mixed up, you can examine them. And you'll see that A1 and A2, yeah, that doesn't have a 1 on it. A1 and A2 have two holes on either side, plus a small hole here, where B2 only has the small hole. So that's how you can tell them apart in case you get them mixed up. Uh, also, when you put them together, you'll notice that A1 is slightly smaller in diameter than A2. Uh, this is going to be important because when we assemble the eBay, A1 actually goes inside the coupler and A2 will go on the outside. It's not supposed to go all the way in. So now if there's that little tab on the outside, just knock it off with uh, some sandpaper, just like that. Now the reason we sanded uh, the sled was so that we could slide it through the slot. And it's meant to be a tight fit. And so you can see how tight this is. That's a little too tight. So I want to sand it down. I'm 
both sides, particularly on the tabs. So if you're not going to sand at all, at least sand the tabs. And just keep sanding until you get a nice snug fit, and that's pretty good right there. Yeah, I like that. Check this one. And we're going to do the same with B1 and B2. And with C shape. I don't know what you would call that shape. So we just call it the C shape. Again, knock out all the little internal pieces, and those can be discarded. So again, I want to do a fit check. Just make sure everything slides. It's not too tight because you need to be able to pull these off. Well, not the B parts, but the A parts. Okay. Okay, now we're going to start assembling these. And when you put these together, again, B1 is a different size than B2. I'm going to knock off those little tabs on the top. Right, like right there. Okay, when they go together, they need to align just like that. And when they go into the coupler, it's going to stop, and this is the stop on the end. So now we're going to glue these together. But before we do that, since this, this side here is going to go into the coupler, I can make my life easier in the future just by knocking off the edge of that, the corner edge, so that gives me a little radius that will slide a little bit easier into the coupler. Okay, and it's the same with A1 part. So the part that's going to slide in first Kind of knock off the edge so that it's not so square, has a little radius to it. This isn't in the printed instructions. It'll work if you don't do it. It's just a little bit harder to get in. Okay. So now we're going to glue them together. And what we're going to do to make sure that everything's aligned perfectly we're going to use this as a tool to help make sure everything aligns. Okay. Just going to knock off the edges on this side here a little bit. Just to make it a little easier to, to slide on and off. All right, just like that. See, when we put it together, the little holes line up perfectly. So now I'm going to take B2, smear some glue on it. Come on, glue bottle open. Have a paper towel handy. Smear it around. Put them together. All right, now there's there's glue oozing everywhere, and it's, it's sliding around a lot. Before I put it on, I want to kind of clean out those slots as much as I can of any glue, because well, on B1 and B2 it's not so critical. B2 goes on the opposite side as the Apogee logo like that. And it's going to actually be glued in place. So I'm going to back it off just a little bit and I'm going to put some glue there. 
both sides. Now I'm going to push it in hard. And I want it to go all the way against the wood. And then you can take your glue there and fill it on both sides. And I'll put some fill it on this side as well. Okay, and then I want to clean out the hole. That hole is for attaching the shock cord and the parachute on the front part of the rocket. Okay, now I want to inspect the outside perimeter here. And if any glue oozed out, I want to wipe that off and I want to do it before the glue has a chance to get dry. Because the reason for this is it doesn't get glued in the coupler. We're going to be able, we need to be able to pull the coupler on and off when we assemble the rocket uh, and when we're, we're setting it up for the flight. So this is perfect, just like that. So that was B1 and B2. And I'm going to pause here and in the next video I'll start assembling a1 and A2. It's almost identical, but there's a little trick to it. So just wait for that.